Pick a paper, any paper. Which one do you want to cut out first? But I'm so confused. I don't know which one to start with. This video is for you today. I'm going to show you the difference between a foundation paper, a template layout sheet, a T template, and just a regular template. It's very simple. You just have to know which one is which and then it'll be easy to cut out. So hopefully we'll clear that up for you today. Stick around and I'll show you how to do it. I just wanted to give you a quick little preview of the latest technique of the month. You've probably seen pictures out there on Facebook from all the different instructors, but you can kind of see a little bit behind my head. This is my version of the Queen Coral Reef. That's just the top half of it on the back board there that is made out of the Cortez Mini Collection. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to take a class or either from me or from one of your local Quiltworks instructors so you can learn how to make the newest technique of the month. Now on to business. Let's talk about papers. Hi there, thanks for tuning in again. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jenny Clark. I'm a certified quilt works instructor and I love teaching quilting and I'm also a long arm quilter. But if you're here, I'm assuming that you're here to learn about newsprint pages and what's the difference between the templates and the foundation pieces. Okay, so, so in the pattern, Judy tells you to cut the foundation papers, cut around the outside by eighth of an inch and then on the template papers, you cut right on the solid dark line. Well, I've had so many of my students mix that up and they cut the foundation papers right on the outside line and they leave an eighth of an inch or even a quarter of an inch outside of the templates. So here's my rule of thumb, just to make it easy so you don't have to know which one is which. Just cut all of your papers, whether it's a template or a foundation piece, just cut them all out about an eighth of an inch and then there's no confusion but I'm still going to show you which one is which so you'll know when you open up your papers which one is the foundation, which one is the template. So here we go. Anything that says newsprint, this is, these are the sheets that your foundation pieces are going to be on for the most part. Every once in a while you'll see a newsprint that has one or two templates on it if it's a smaller pattern and they can fit both of the foundation pieces and the templates on one page, then you'll see that happen quite often. But for the most part, if it's a bigger pattern, um, wall size or up, you're most likely going to see a separate newsprint page and then you'll have an action, a template page. It will be designated with a T, TP here at the bottom. That means that it's a template page and everything that's on this page for the most part is going to be a either a T template or a template layout sheet or just a traditional template where it just cuts out one piece and I will show you the difference between all of those. Here's an overview look of what the newspaper print is going to look like and anything that has an indication that says unit these are all your foundation units that you're going to actually be sewing on. And you'll even see that it has the line numbers here. That's where you're actually going to be doing your sewing. So that's the difference between the foundation units and the template units. Basically, like I said earlier, you're going to see where it indicates newsprint versus the template, which is like this one here, the template. This is going to have all your templates on it. This one will have all your units on it. Remember, I said if it has, if it indicates that it's a unit, just like right here, if it says unit on it, and you can see that it's got the quarter inch seam allowance, that's going to indicate that it is a foundation paper. And then if you look a little bit closer here at a template sheet, these usually have a solid black line around them. They won't have the nice quarter inch seam allowance like these ones do. And then the, you'll see cut lines if it's a template layout sheet. Or it will actually say template on it in the case of like a T template. But see these also say template. So these are the ones that you use to cut your fabric. The foundation papers like this unit M. This is what you're going to be doing your sewing on. So this is your foundation paper. 
So this is just an overview of what the template sheet looks like. You've got regular template layout sheets on one, as well as over here in the back, you've got the T templates. So that's all on one page. Okay, so we talked a little bit about what each sheet is, like the difference between the template sheets and the newsprint sheets, which are your units that you sew on, the foundation sheets. So, what happens if you have more than one sheet of the same? I'm going to show you how you can stack those together. I, on, I only recommend doing about four sheets. It's really dependent on what you're comfortable, but if you have like the same sheets, you know, figure out how many you have. If you've got eight sheets, maybe you could do four and four. If you have six sheets, you could do three and three, something like that. But even if you just have two sheets, you can stack those two together and cut them all out at the same time. It makes it a lot quicker for your cutting. So let me show you down on the mat how we do it. Okay, when you get ready to cut out multiple pages, a couple things you're going to need is some flower head pins as well as a stapler. And you want to make sure that you have all of the same sheets. So in this one, I've got one, two, three sheets. And then if you look at your sheets, you should have a page number, page one on one corner, and then on the opposite corner over here, you should have another number, which is page two. You want to make sure that those are all in the same direction. So there's a two and there's a two. So all three of them are oriented in the same direction. If you somehow had one rotated around the other way, they wouldn't match up. So what we're trying to do is basically match all three of these sheets up. They're not, they get printed on a big newspaper print press, so they're not always exactly the same. So you can't just line up the edges of the page, like, you know, if you lined all these edges up here and got them all straight, that doesn't necessarily mean that these are printed the same exact spot on each page. So, if you've ever done a stack and whack type quilt where you stack the same print of fabric all on top of each other using a pin, we're basically going to be doing that same type of where we stick a pin through and match up all the points underneath. So, let me zoom back in and I'll show you how I do that with mine. So what I like to do is I'll find a few spots, like I'll usually go find a spot here on this corner, something on that corner, then something in the middle, then I'll go over here to this corner, then I'll come down to this corner, maybe I'll find that corner there, something that's easy to, that's easy to match up on each, and then I might do something in the middle here. So what I like to do. Alright, so let me find page one, the first page, and then what I'm going to do, I'll get this centered a little bit better for you, is find the corner right here. I'm going to stick the pin in, then I'll go to page two, the second page, set, find the same exact corner, stick the pin in, and then I'll try find the third page here. So I've got my needle through the same point on all three of those, and I'll just kind of wiggle a little bit, make sure that it's straight, and then I'll stick the pin. Then I'll go to another corner up here. I'll go to this corner and across. Let me go ahead and do that real quick, and then when, I, when I'm done pinning everywhere, I'll come back and show you what the whole page looks like. Okay, so now by the magic of video, I've got all of my areas pinned. You can see the pins on all of the corners. I even put one in the middle on the side there. Just found a spot that I could match up on all sides. So now that I have it pinned, the next step is we're going to staple all of those pieces together. Take my handy dandy stapler. We're going to just come in and each unit I'm just going to pop a staple in there. This is a separate unit. Pop a staple. I'm just going to staple all of these pieces. Make sure that I have a staple in each unit so when I cut them out they're not going to fall apart. So once I have all of those pieces stapled, then I can come back and take out all my pins. 
Okay, now that I've got them all stapled, I'm ready to kind of cut them out. And what I like to do is take a look at my overall sheet and I'll see if there's any lines that I can put my ruler along and trim all of those pieces. So for instance, I, this is a straight line. Everything is all matched up. So I could put my ruler on and cut that one. If I come over to this side, same thing here. This is all lined up so I can use my ruler and cut that eighth of an inch away. So let me put down my camera. I'll grab my ruler and my rotary cutter and I will show you how I do that. Okay, so here I have my ruler and if you look real close, this is a Creative Grids ruler and it's got eighth inch increments. So this line right here is my eighth inch and then this is a quarter inch. So what I do is I will line up the edge of that block on this eighth inch mark. If you see, here's the edge of the block and I'm lining up my eighth inch marks on that. And then I can go ahead and make a cut all the way down. So I'll start at this edge. I'm gonna hold that solid. And if you move up all the way the paper, I can just slide my ruler down if you don't have the length of the page and cut that eighth of an inch all the way down. So see, now I've got a nice eighth of an inch on that side. So I can do the same on the other side. If I just flip my papers, line up that eighth of an inch mark on the edge of my unit. These are my foundation papers. And I'm just going to slice, slide this back a little bit. Cut into my other papers that I've already cut. That's one thing that you want to take me wonder how I know this, right? Make sure that all your other papers underneath are out of the way so you don't accidentally cut into one of the papers that you've already cut. And that would be bad because then you'd need another set of papers or lots of tape. So that's how you cut out your foundation papers with the eighth of an inch and then just kind of go through and cut all your individual pieces and your papers are going to be all ready to go. Then after that, you need to put them in, after you have them all cut out, put them into the appropriate Ziploc bag so you stay all organized. And then you'll be cutting out your fabrics with your template pieces, and then you'll be ready to start sewing. Okay, so now we're ready to cut out our template pieces. Now, if you are comfortable with knowing the difference between what your templates are and your foundation pieces, you can go ahead and cut these ones on the solid line. So I just line up the edge of my ruler right on that outside solid line and cut that paper off. See, it's right on the solid edge. If you don't feel comfortable and you're not sure if you've got the right either foundation piece or template piece, because remember the foundation papers are the ones that you sew on, these are template pieces and these are the ones that you use to cut out your fabrics. If you're not comfortable cutting on the solid line, then just cut an eighth of an inch away. Just use the same principle that I showed you on how to cut out your foundation papers with your template papers and just line up that eighth of an inch mark on the ruler. These are the papers that you're going to be setting on top of your fabrics to cut out your fabric pieces. So, you know, it's nice to have them cut on the solid line, but like I said, if you're not comfortable with that, then it's perfectly fine. There's no really set rules. If you want to cut a little extra, an eighth, eighth of an inch outside that solid line, then do what feels comfortable to you. Again, if you, uh, it's always nice to measure twice, cut once. So once you cut, if you cut it wrong, then, uh, you're sometimes you're SOL and have to get new papers, but uh, so cut out your template sheets on the solid line if you are sure that it's a template piece. If you're not sure, not comfortable, cut them an eighth of an inch using your ruler, okay? So this is another view, another uh, template layout sheet. I just kind of wanted to go over this again just to reiterate. When you're cutting out your templates, the preference is that you cut them on the solid line because this is the paper that you will be laying on top of your fabrics to cut out your pieces for making your quilt. Fine. 
on a template layout sheet. If you see here where it has all these different cut lines, this is cut line one, right here is cut line two. Do not cut those right now when we're cutting out papers. All you do is cut the out, outer perimeter of this template layout sheet. Then when you place this on your fabric to cut out the pieces, that's when you're gonna use the cut lines and subcut your fabric down into the appropriate size pieces for your quilt. So again, do not cut these cut lines while you're cutting your paper. Wait until you have it on your fabric. What about a tea template? What do we do with our tea templates? When you have a tea template, your fabric needs to be cut exactly to the size of this tea template. I personally like to cut a little bit bigger, then that way when you put it on your fabric, you're cut, then you cut exactly to the size that it needs to be and you have a little bit of extra on your paper. If I were to cut it right on the solid line right now, sometimes I feel like I would maybe cut my piece too small if I don't cut it exactly right. So that's why I like to leave the little bit of extra outside. So on a T template, cut it a, an eighth to a quarter of an inch outside of that outside line, you cut the fabric to the exact outside line of this T template. Because you because when you sew it into your pattern, this has to be the exact right size. If it's too big or too little, it may not fit into your quilt or it may distort your piecing and ha make you have to stretch a piece and we do not want that because we want all of our pieces to fit together perfectly. So that is how you cut out your T templates. I found a newsprint. See right here is a newsprint. This is on a newer pattern. This is uh, from the Macaw pattern actually. It has a template layout sheet as well as a standard template. So the one thing that's a little bit unique about a standard template, it's not a template layout sheet where you're cutting out multiple pieces and it's not a T template that is that has to be cut exact. It's just one piece that is for a unit similar to this. This is the unit it goes with. Only one piece is required and then this is a vein that gets sewn on. So the way that you will use these standard templates is you will just cut around the outside line and then when you're going through your fabric cutting instructions you will just place this on your fabric and cut as many pieces as your pattern requires just out of this one template piece. The other thing that's unique about this newsprint page is they've been doing this uh, more recent on some of their newer patterns is an assembly diagram. So when you cut out your papers, just cut around this and stick this little piece in your pattern. So when it comes time to assembling all of your pieces after you've sewn them, then you've got your pressing and assembly directions right here. One other unique form of a template layout that you will see is have a pattern that you notice there's some dashed lines. Basically just cut around that dash line and then don't do any sub cutting on it until you actually place it onto your pattern. So it indicates right here on the directions to cut a four inch wide strip. So this whole template around the dash line is designed and used on a four inch strip and you will see this in other patterns. So just kind of have to be aware of what type of template you have and follow your directions, whether it's a T template, a template layout sheet, or a standard template that's either like this or something that you might see that has dashed lines around it. Each one is a little bit unique and you just have to kind of pay attention to your papers and your directions and so I enjoyed making this video I hope that it answered some of your questions and cleared up the difference of what the, all the different papers are that didn't sound very good the difference of the difference <laughs> but anyways I hope that that helps you with your paper piecing projects if you found this video useful to you and helpful one please share it with your friends Two, consider subscribing so you'll be notified when I post more videos with great topics to help you with your quilt works or any paper piecing project that you may have. If you have questions or have different topics that you'd like me to cover, leave me some comments down below. Here's a link to some of my other videos in this Quilt Works 101 Beginner Paper Piecing Series. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.